Okay, well, thank you very much. Uh, and hello, everybody. Good evening. Uh, uh, my name is Stefan Gabos, and I'm a profiling project group. Uh, since 2003, the team in Alberta has been developing public health risk assessment applications on the real time cell analysis or RT. In Alberta, led by our laboratory, the Alberta Center, the members of the group are Asia Biosciences of the RTC. This presentation, the health risk assessment and emerging trends, we will talk about the nanopart detection of the really say. As promised, uh, this will be not technical. As you may all agree, these pictures of the cats uh, clearly represent a hazard because up close and personal, it's a life-threatening situation. However, uh, microbial agents, chemicals, and physical factors can be just as hazardous. The other determinant of or contact with physical, chemical, or biological hazards and the individual. It is easy to see from these pictures how high the depth beneath the sea may pose a risk or a group of people involved, particularly if something goes wrong. The health risk equation is described as the probability of an undesired effect occurs or entire populations of people are exposed to health. As shown in the pictures, a high mountain itself does not constitute a risk. However, if one dares to climb it and becomes exposed to the hazards of the mountain, then the individual or the population of climbers is at risk of suffering injury. Risk is usually expressed as the probability of worse effect occurring, such as one in 100,000, one in one, etc. First described by CTA about uh, 50 years ago, risk assessment is a process that involves or has hazard identification by the chemical assessment, what kind of exposure levels of the chemical exposed during a period of time, together. Uh, finally, uh, the risk characterization step uh, defines what is the exposed uh, population. Last uh, five days, this team is changing rapidly. The Research Council, the GIC program, and, uh, have all commitments as opposed to strategies to achieve this objective. It's good to know that the toxicity testing in the 21st entitled uh, strategy by the leading Canadian expert in this field, Dr. Daniel Kusnak, and population uh, for health risk assessment of Ottawa. The new uh, as and risk science. You look at the site and approach involves in logical studies and in the animal testing uh, context. Response assessment based on either the we tend to rely more on modeling based on a battery of in vitro assays, system biology, and uh, diverse toxicokinetics or pharmac. Exposure assessment involves uh, the identification of the receptors or targets, uh, path concentration uh, to a chemical, the internalized uh, dose. In uh, the TT21 and uh, RS21 approach, uh, you can see the, of the population uh, exposure data gathered uh, from biomonitoring and personal exposure uh, monitoring. The, the current approach involves risk assessment models, probabilistic approaches, and in the future, we are hoping uh, to have more biologically relevant health risk assessments. Over 15 years, we are experiencing a true technological revolution in molecular and cellular biology, characterized by the introduction of high throughput instrumentation, formation gathering, real time dynamic information, non invasive and non attractive uh, methods, multiplexing technologies, advances in bioinformatics, to name just. Today, uh, the real-time cell assessment incorporates uh, various types of convert the physiological signals or other parameters of cell function signals. The most commonly used techniques are optical and electroaction. Optics-based systems often measure fluorescence, absorbance, uh, chemoluminescence, uh, uh, surface uh, plasma resonance, or changes in light reflectivity. Electrochemical systems measure the transfer of electrons, electrons uh, between the electrodes and the molecules or ions present in the solution in which the electrodes are immersed. On the basis of the mean measure, those electron transfers, the real-time cell analyzers are classified as amperometric, potentiometric, uh, conductometric, or impedometric. While electrochemical and optical methods are most commonly used, uh, 
other methods such as uh, piezoelectric thermal and mechanical methods have also been devised. Among the various commercially available systems, we found the extensions instrumentation from ASIA Biosciences to best suit our needs because of its advanced, stable, and reliable technology, faster high throughput capabilities, quantifiable real time information content, capability to monitor both short and long term assays, physiologically relevant data by being non destructive to cells, labeled to maintenance based technology, and its capacity for multiplexing with other assays such as uh, the e-plate uh, view that allows for optical uh, examination. The principle of the extension system was earlier described uh, uh, by Lina, uh, so I uh, deal time on, on, this slide, uh, on this slide. As early as in 2004, uh, our studies uh, have shown the influence of this technology for cell quantification. The slide uh, uh, represents uh, initial experiments conducted uh, in, in Alberta. The seri serially diluted uh, three T3 cells were selected, uh, were seeded into the wells, uh, chimsa, and examined. The top panel shows uh, representative microscopic images of the three T3 cells growing on the sensor electrodes. The starting uh, cell numbers. Uh, and the corresponding cell indices uh, are uh, also uh, also displayed uh, below each well. The bottom left uh, panel shows the linear relationship uh, between the cell number and the cell index uh, obtained from the instrument. The bottom right panel uh, shows uh, the linearity of the cell quantification based on the uh, assay, which is considered to be the gold standard uh, for toxicity testing. The schematic directed by the excelligence system, in addition to cell proliferation and cell death, depending on the experimental uh, design, uh, cell uh, addition and spreading, uh, uh, as well as uh, uh, trans-epithelial uh, or trans-endothelial electrical resistance and micro-motion uh, uh, can also be detected. Health protection, one of the core public health functions, uh, requires ongoing monitoring and surveillance of environmental media, such as water, air, food, and the soil. From the public health perspective, to ensure the population at large is protected from potential adverse effects of harmful chemicals and, of course, biological agents. From a health risk and safety assessment perspective, there is a great need for in vitro toxicity bioassays with higher sensitivity, lower interference, and better predictive value as compared to animal studies. The next sections will uh, present an overview of the Alberta Toxicity Profiling Project, as well as some concrete applications, public health for water and air quality uh, monitoring and others. The landscape of uh, toxicity risk assessment is changing rapidly, and government agencies, universities, and other organizations are facing a significant transformational change. As previously described, these changes are largely being driven by advances in medicine, particularly molecular and cell biology, the technological revolution, and the strategic framework outlined by several uh, significant uh, uh, reports from uh, agencies mentioned before. These events have prompted us in Alberta to look at risk assessment in new ways, to position the government uh, and universities and other agencies for the future, and also to contribute in a meaningful way to the global effort to transform human health risk assessment and risk management. Since 2005, our group has been involved in exploring the emerging science and piloting the implementation of the new health risk assessment paradigm in Alberta. The diagram shown here describes the major components of our approach. Today, uh, basic chemical information uh, is readily available from a number of chemical databases. Therefore, uh, the focus of search is on toxic chemicals in other at the center to cytotoxicity, and the use of the uh, cellular time response and uh, dose response uh, information. FNGHS, uh, globally harmonized system uh, uh, classification of chemicals, 
and the prediction of the in vivo doses. In our first study, we also have an ongoing uh, uh, biomonitoring program that helps us with population uh, exposure uh, uh, assessment, and uh, the information uh, can be used for the purpose of uh, developing the exposure standards as well as uh, health risk assessments. This slide uh, presents our specific objectives uh, in relation to possible uh, approaches uh, to the study of the cause effect pathway here. Similar to other agencies and uh, programs, our goals are uh, threefold. Uh, development of biologically relevant human exposure standards, prediction of in vivo doses, and the GHS classification of chemicals. We believe that uh, this could be accomplished uh, by focusing our efforts uh, on the in vitro identification of toxicity pathways and the characterization of the mode of action uh, of the chemicals. Therefore, uh, looking at uh, the cause effect uh, pathway, our focus is uh, in this area of uh, the molecular uh, initi initiating events, subcellular or, uh, organelle responses, cellular uh, uh, effects. This diagram uh, describes uh, the experimental approach. Uh, our focus is on uh, environmental factors, and uh, we have developed a list of about uh, 1,000 priority chemicals relevant to our data. You can call this a short list. However, in order to understand the hazards posed by unknown, we need uh, and the toxicity protocols with uh, no mode of action. We call them uh, reference compounds, uh, and particularly the well studied pharmaceutical. And so we have a uh, selected uh, uh, well characterizations. Uh, 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 and uh, thirdly, uh, we are also uh, using uh, representative, uh, representative uh, chemicals uh, that have been classified uh, in various uh, uh, G categories. Thus far, uh, we have tested, uh, or we are in the process of testing the box 5 uh, cell, also working uh, through the challenges of uh, data and uh, modeling, uh, particularly the interpretation of the time response uh, and the dose response codes and the other right, uh, uh, measures uh, uh, with our modeling group. Based on various criteria, initially we have established a panel of cell lines to, present, uh, to represent uh, the response of different organs. Uh, this was the cell panel used uh, in 2012. However, because of a number of uh, uh, reasons, currently uh, we use a panel of five cell lines. The purpose of uh, the data analysis is to classify the chemicals based on their toxicity response into uh, mode of action, MOA, and GHS uh, categories. However, the data interpretation is proving to be challenging. We are experimenting with different approaches, uh, include the so-called moving horizon estimate, uh, the extended Kalman filter, the area under the curve, uh, so-called KC50, and state uh, cell state variable identification, whatever these mean, we won't get into the uh, biostatistical uh, modeling uh, uh, today. One interesting approach to the bioanalysis of cell growth dynamics uh, was described uh, by Warringer and collaborators in 2008, and the uh, method is based on resolving the cellular growth curve into its individual components, the lag phase, uh, the rate uh, of growth during the exponential phase, and uh, what they call the growth efficiency or basically the cumulative uh, uh, growth. Now, uh, the, uh, various uh, three different uh, uh, variables are, uh, are computed, and then we have been trying to uh, plot uh, uh, these uh, variables, uh, see if we can get uh, some uh, clustering that makes sense. And uh, in this 3D uh, cluster, uh, uh, we plotted the growth efficiency or cumulative growth, uh, the lag phase uh, uh, by the growth rate. And the preliminary findings suggest that the resolution and the quantification of uh, these three facets of growth uh, 
increases the informational value of uh, chemical uh, screening. Hence, uh, it may facilitate uh, physio physiologically more complex uh, uh, analysis of chemical uh, cell interactions. However, uh, this work is still uh, very much in its uh, infancy. Another uh, interesting method uh, is, uh, has been developed by the National Cancer Institute, or uh, NCI, uh, that uh, for decades uh, uh, has been uh, uh, testing compounds for the ability to inhibit the growth of uh, human, uh, human tumor cells uh, in, in culture. Uh, it has been demonstrated that compounds with similar mechanisms of cell growth inhibition uh, show similar patterns uh, of activity in the NCI screen, which consists uh, of about 60 different cell lines. This observation uh, was developed into an algorithm called the Kinter algorithm and has been successfully used to predict mechanisms for a wide variety of compounds. Uh, more recently, the method has also been extended to associate patterns of cell growth inhibition by uh, compounds with measurements of uh, gene expression uh, in the cell lines in the NCI screen. A very promising uh, approach. Uh, the globally ha harmonized system of classification and uh, labeling of chemicals, or GHS, uh, is an internationally agreed upon system developed by the United uh, uh, Nations for the safety labeling of chemicals at the global level. In addition uh, to hazard identification, the system uh, facilitate, uh, uh, facilitates uh, hazard characterization, health risk uh, uh, assessment, uh, as well as uh, risk communication. From a health perspective, acute toxicity includes five GHS categories uh, from which the appropriate uh, elements relevant to transport, consumer and worker uh, safety and environmental protection uh, can be selected. Uh, substances are usually assigned to one of the five toxicity categories on the basis of uh, in vivo uh, LD50. Uh, this uh, table uh, uh, shows our efforts uh, to predict uh, the GHS uh, categories uh, on uh, in vitro uh, uh, cytotoxicity testing. Uh, these columns, uh, columns here uh, are uh, from the so-called registry, registry for uh, cytotoxicity and uh, they describe uh, the 50% uh, of the inhibitory concentration, IC50, that was derived uh, for a number of uh, chemicals. Uh, now, uh, these uh, uh, three columns uh, here represent uh, some of our findings, and uh, without uh, going into, into much uh, detail, the initial uh, uh, predictions uh, seem to be pretty good, at least comparable to uh, those uh, uh, that uh, were obtained uh, using the, the registry for uh, cytotoxicity. Alternative approaches to in vivo toxicity tests with animals uh, may help reduce the number of animal experiments uh, uh, required by uh, refining uh, the in vivo starting doses. Thus, uh, the de determination of uh, cytotoxicity using cell cultures could be an important complementary method to generate uh, more information about the general basal toxicity of substance. We employed our uh, cell panel to test the basal toxicity of a number of sub substances uh, using both the uh, uh, IC50 and the so-called KC50 values uh, to predict the in vivo uh, LD50 doses. As presented in the graph, uh, cytotoxicity measures, particularly the KC50 value, show a good correlation with the in vivo uh, LD50. Uh, thus, uh, cytotoxicity tests, uh, tests and the comparison of uh, uh, the KC50 uh, and LD50 could therefore uh, contribute to uh, reduce the number of uh, animal uh, experiments. To close off uh, this chapter on uh, chemical risk assessment, uh, I would like to uh, 
show that uh, using in vitro biological responses, uh, including uh, cytotoxicity, uh, to predict human health risks uh, appears to be promising. Uh, however, uh, far more work needs to be done to understand uh, what adverse uh, molecular, uh, organelle, and cellular effects uh, are the most relevant uh, uh, determinants uh, uh, of uh, the longer term toxicity and uh, what combination of uh, bioassays uh, is the best to capture and characterize uh, toxicity pathways. In addition, uh, there is also more, uh, uh, much more work uh, needed to <clears throat> be done in uh, systems biology, uh, reverse pharma pharmacokinetics, in terms of uh, modeling health risks and uh, uh, deriving uh, human exposure uh, standards. The next uh, uh, sl uh, few slides will talk uh, about uh, water quality and uh, particularly the water toxicity assay uh, being developed uh, at the Alberta Center uh, for Toxicology by uh, Dorothy Huang's group. Uh, we all know that there is an increasing public awareness and concern about uh, water supplies for human consum consumption. And uh, uh, water uh, uh, is uh, impacted by uh, anthropogenic uh, activities, both in terms of uh, microbial and chemical water quality. In many countries, uh, there are emerging uh, new regulatory uh, changes, uh, setting uh, national performance standards, uh, uh, creating new sampling and uh, testing uh, requirements, as well as uh, uh, risk requiring health risk assessments. The water quality index or uh, method uh, was initially proposed uh, back in the 1960s. Uh, since then, uh, the form formulation and use of uh, indices has been strongly advocated by, by agencies responsible for water supply and control of water pollution. The concept of water quality index is based on the comparison of the water quality parameters with respect to regulatory standards and gives a single value to the uh, water quality of the source. Uh, uh, and. Uh, the water quality index uh, assesses uh, the appropriateness of the quality of the water for a variety of uses, uh, not only habitat for aquatic life or irrigation, recreation, but uh, more importantly from our perspective, uh, uh, drinking water. The water toxicity uh, testing uh, developed by uh, Dorothy Huang's uh, uh, group uh, is focusing on uh, surface water, uh, drinking water, recreational water, municipal wastewater, as well as uh, industrial effluents uh, and process, uh, process water. There are currently a number of uh, standard uh, water toxicity assays uh, that use uh, microbial agents uh, mostly uh, and other organisms uh, uh, to uh, conduct a bioassay of the toxicity of chemicals in various uh, water sources. The uh, real-time cell uh, analyzer-based water toxicity uh, assay uh, is being developed uh, to demonstrate the utility of human cell-based uh, uh, exhalation screening uh, uh, to assess toxicity of various uh, source waters. Uh, and also to introduce a toxicity index uh, to evaluate uh, various degrees of toxicity in various water, uh, water types. So the water toxicity uh, index uh, developed in, uh, in Dorothy's lab is uh, based on a fairly simple uh, uh, statistical uh, uh, calculation. However, we won't go uh, into that at this time. What's important uh, uh, to remember is that toxicity uh, index uh, uh, above uh, one means a meaningful uh, uh, response or uh, uh, toxic response. Our index below one means uh, there is uh, uh, no uh, toxicity uh, response. 
The Alberta Center for uh, Toxicology uh, uh, has uh, been working on, uh, on this uh, project since uh, 2012. And uh, by the end of uh, uh, 2013, tested about 550 water samples from various sources, uh, including uh, drinking water, uh, domestic well water, uh, various uh, surface uh, water uh, sources, industrial water, and wastewater uh, effluents. Dorothy has uh, demonstrated that uh, the Toxic response uh, is different uh, uh, in the various cell lines. Here we have a bar graph of uh, representing the response in five different uh, uh, cell types. Uh, you can see that uh, some uh, cell lines are more sensitive uh, than uh, others uh, 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 in terms of uh, the uh, toxic response. Uh, uh, these uh, graphs are examples of uh, how the water toxicity index uh, is being used. Uh, uh, values uh, above one uh, mean uh, toxic response, while uh, values uh, below one uh, mean that there is no uh, uh, meaningful uh, response. And number of industrial uh, uh, water, such as pulp and paper, mean effluence, as well as uh, uh, agricultural uh, waters. Uh, also municipal waters and surface waters have been tested. As shown in these graphs, uh, particularly the agricultural irrigation waters and the municipal base water waters show an increased uh, uh, toxicity. Uh, don't you also compare the, the exelligence uh, toxicity, water toxicity assay the currently used uh, gold standard, the microtox, uh, so-called microtox uh, uh, assay, and um, uh, uh, found that uh, the two assays, uh, they compared uh, uh, very well in, in, in terms of uh, uh, the data that, uh, uh, that they uh, provide. And uh, uh, there are certain advantages and disadvantages, uh, of course, to, to both of them. The correlation between uh, the two bio using uh, the five different uh, cell lines show that there is a very good uh, uh, correlation uh, between the exelligence uh, assay and the microtox uh, assay. The exelligence system also exhibits a number of um, uh, advantages. Uh, uh, such as uh, speed and uh, it's prone to uh, be used as a uh, high throughput screening. So early indication, uh, it, it can uh, provide early indication of water hazards uh, is relevant from a, more relevant from a human health perspective. It uses multiple cell lines. Uh, it's re it, it, it is relevant for human exposure. It can uh, be used for screening mixtures. Uh, as well as uh, for the quick evaluation of uh, environmental uh, uh, incidents. Uh, of course, uh, we have a number of other uh, uh, water contaminants uh, related uh, projects uh, going on. And again, at the Center for Toxicology, a method has been developed for the, the screening of microsystems, this is a toxin produced by uh, the blue-green algae, algae, as well as uh, uh, other, uh, other work. Uh, to close uh, the water the contaminants, uh, as I'm, I'm showing these pictures uh, just to uh, emphasize that in addition to its aesthetic value, water quality is also an important uh, uh, from a health perspective, and in fact, it is one of the major uh, determinants of health. The exelligence system, based on our experience, uh, uh, can be used for water toxicity bio, uh, bioassay and has an important role uh, to play, uh, particularly monitoring chemical uh, water quality. The next few slides uh, will talk about uh, air pollution related uh, health, risk, uh, health risks. As uh, you all know, there are many different uh, types of uh, air pollutants uh, from wide uh, range of sources. 
And the most important ones are some of the uh, toxic gases and the particulate uh, matter, also called uh, PM5. The Air Quality Health Index is currently being used uh, to help understand uh, what the air quality means from a health perspective. Uh, it uses a scale from uh, 1 to 10, uh, uh, 1 to 3 being the uh, best air quality and uh, the higher the number gets, uh, the worst air quality is. The current pollutants include, uh, included in the air quality index uh, are uh, fine, part fine particulates, uh, particulate matter with a diameter uh, less than 2.5 microns, uh, nitrogen dioxide. However, uh, it does not measure the air toxic or the toxicity of particles in, in general. The first application of the incidence-based uh, RTCA uh, toward the evolution, uh, evaluation of uh, health relevant particles was first supported in a study from uh, Xin Fang's laboratory uh, at the University of Alberta in 2008. Uh, in this study, several types of uh, particulate uh, matter were examined, including quartz, uh, standard reference materials, uh, urban dust, diesel exhaust uh, particles. The figure shows uh, the dynamic uh, monitoring uh, of cyclotoxicity response uh, into cell lines A549 and SQMES1 to, cell, uh, uh, to uh, quartz particles. Uh, The IC50 values uh, uh, show uh, the relative toxicity in uh, uh, the SKMS1 cells uh, uh, of uh, that the various uh, particulate matter uh, studied quartz, urban dust, and, uh, and diesel uh, exhaust. exhaust uh, the successful detection of uh, the cytotoxicity uh, demonstrates the potential application of uh, this technique for uh, the monitoring of uh, air quality, particularly as it relates to uh, uh, public health. More recently, uh, Birgit uh, Mo and uh, uh, her group in Xinfang's group uh, uh, provided uh, an article describing the cell electronic sensing of cellular responses to micro and nanoparticles for environmental applications in the publication called Encyclopedia of uh, Analytical uh, Chemistry. The cytotoxicity of uh, uh, quartz uh, micropart microparticles was examined by uh, Burgit and, and her group using uh, the RTCA methodology in two, two human, uh, human uh, lung carcinoma cell lines. Uh, the figure shows uh, the RTCA profile for these uh, uh, cell lines uh, 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 as function of uh, the quartz uh, dose uh, administered. administered uh, the figure also shows uh, the profile of uh, the SKMS1 cell line uh, with uh, 0.1 milligram per milliliter of uh, quartz. Application uh, of the impedance-based uh, uh, systems toward the cytotoxicity analysis of uh, environmentally sampled particulate uh, matter uh, uh, shows the cytotoxicity profile generated uh, uh, using uh, our system uh, by uh, Burgit and, and uh, uh, collaborators. Uh, air particulates uh, uh, extracted from uh, PM 2.5 air quality uh, monitoring filters uh, uh, received from Environment Canada uh, uh, were studied. And the figure shows, uh, uh, figure D shows the corresponding IC50 uh, values over time uh, for uh, the cells exposed to uh, air particulates. Uh, in conclusion, uh, this uh, impedance uh, bias it provides a sensitive and rapid methodology for the analysis of uh, PM toxicity. 
there is a good uh, dose response relationship, particularly in human lung carcinoma cell lungs. The assay provides uh, an opportunity to examine the toxicity of complex uh, particulate matter mixtures and also demonstrate the ability of the real time cell analysis to quantitatively assess the toxicity of PM for the purpose of uh, environmental monitoring from a health perspective. So just a few slides uh, uh, related to uh, nanotoxicity work. Uh, so you all know there is a growing debate uh, regarding the human health and safety risks of nanomaterials. These are the, uh, these present uh, unique toxic uh, properties because uh, of their physical characteristics, uh, uh, mostly size and shape, even when uh, they are made of inert materials. Uh, it work shows that nanomaterials have provide uh, have proved to toxic results uh, in uh, in. Uh, in increased oxidative stress, cytokine production or inflammation, and cell death. So understanding uh, the smart test in the cytotoxicity of nanoparticles is important uh, to public health. Having previously demonstrated the application of the RTCA method toward the understanding of uh, titanium dioxide nanoparticles and the mediated cytotoxicity, uh, Birkitt and uh, her collaborators expanded the method to include an additional uh, nanoparticle, specifically uh, nanosilver, and uh, two additional cell lines. The figures show typical RCA sensing profiles of uh, the titanium dioxide and uh, uh, silver uh, nanoparticles in all three cell lines. The profiles show both nanoparticle-dependent and cell-dependent uh, cytotoxicity. This uh, uh, <coughs> figure out from uh, Burdick's uh, publication in the Encyclopedia of uh, Analytical uh, Chemistry shows uh, the, the cell index over time in the show K1 cells exposed to silver nanoparticles uh, generated using uh, the system. The uh, microscopic images uh, above uh, correspond to the uh, marked uh, points in, uh, in time, uh, time points uh, on the cytotoxicity profile and uh, show uh, that uh, the untreated uh, control cells as well as uh, the to various concentrations of uh, silver uh, nanoparticles. Uh, and uh, uh, finally, just a few words about uh, the development of a new mutagenistic bioassay. Mutations are, of course, changes in uh, the sequence of uh, nucleotides uh, within a cell uh, caused by mutagenic chemicals, viruses, radiation. They are usually bad for the organism and may cause uh, disease, particularly uh, cancer. Um, hundreds of thousands uh, of chemicals introduced into the environment have never been tested uh, for mutagenicity. And current mutagenicity bioassays are slow, low throughput, and cannot detect uh, all the mutagenic uh, uh, chemicals. So, uh, the current strategy for mutagenicity testing includes uh, a priori consider the chemical structure, metabolism, roots of exposure, etc. Uh, it uses, uh, uh, there are in vitro uh, methods that usually use bacterial tests uh, for, gene, uh, for detecting gene mutations, and the AIMS test is uh, the currently recognized uh, gold standards. Uh, in addition, uh, detection of chromosomal mutations uh, and uh, some mammalian cell mutation assays, particularly the HPRT and others uh, are uh, currently being used. There are also in vivo uh, testing uh, methods. Uh, James Shing's uh, uh, group has been working the past few years uh, to show the proof of concept of uh, an RTCA 
HPRT uh, mutation assay. HPRT te- uh, stands for an enzyme called uh, hypoxanthine phosphoribosyl transferase, uh, and is a gene located on the uh, X chromosome of the mammalian cells. It is used as a model gene to investigate gene mutations uh, in mammalian cell lines. Uh, the assay can detect a wide range of uh, ke- chemicals capable of uh, causing uh, uh, DNA damage. The slide uh, provides the methodology uh, developed on the exelligent, uh, exelligence uh, system. In the proof of concept uh, work, uh, <clears throat> despite uh, uh, normal cells with uh, different number of uh, mutant cells uh, that, we, uh, that we obtained and uh, generated these growth curves uh, uh, of the mutant uh, cells. The cells, uh, I forgot to mention, the treated with uh, uh, 5-FU, which kills all the normal cells, and this line, uh, this growth curve here shows uh, the control, uh, control cells all being killed. But the mutant cells are uh, resistant to 5-FU and continue growing. Only uh, the exponential portion of the curves uh, is used to uh, develop a, a baseline as well as set uh, various thresholds uh, to detect uh, uh, the number of uh, mutated cells. Uh, uh, and uh, we found uh, that uh, the so-called uh, mutation time, which is the time uh, 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 from uh, uh, the beginning of, of the experiments uh, correlates very well with the number of uh, cell copy, uh, uh, mutant cell copies. The experiments were very reproducible as shown uh, in this uh, graph uh, about uh, uh, six different uh, repetitions of, uh, of the tests. Uh, also when comparing to the uh, current gold standard uh, uh, RTC assay uh, shows a very good uh, 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 correlation. In conclusion, uh, we have demonstrated the proof of concept, at least, of uh, new biases for detection of uh, HPRT mutated uh, cells. Uh, the method provides a uh, uh, powerful tool. Uh, the higher throughput for genotox uh, toxicity testing. Uh, uh, for the first time, uh, we have developed uh, uh, and used the cell growth kinetic curves for the quantification of mutant cells. So the results obtained uh, with the RTCA are in close agreement with those of the conventional uh, gene toxicity assays. Further adaptation, uh, much more work uh, is, uh, however, uh, uh, required. Uh, just a couple of more slides uh, about uh, future trends. Uh, uh, in toxicity testing and, and risk assessment. Uh, clearly, the identification of toxicity pathways and the mode of action of uh, chemicals uh, will be a major uh, uh, area uh, of the development. Uh, in addition, the interpretation and evaluation of the biological information from a health risk assessment uh, uh, perspective uh, uh, needs uh, lots, uh, lots more work. Uh, uh, the development of mechanistically-based predictive models uh, of the biological uh, response in vivo. Also, the emergence of new areas of applications, such as assessment, such as food contaminants, consumer products, safety, mutagenicity. And, of course, uh, making sense uh, out of all this data uh, through bioinformatics approaches. In terms of uh, the technology, uh, we'll see continued improvement of the high throughput screening technologies, uh, development of uh, toxicity-based field monitoring instruments uh, is an uh, area of need, uh, particularly having sensitive portable sta- stable devices for various ambient media monitoring. Multiplexing the impedance uh, uh, methodology with other cell-based technology would certainly help uh, with the identification of toxicity pathways and MOA, and perhaps even the development of uh, uh, a cellular or cell less uh, impedance-based technology may have a role in uh, 
the detection of specific molecular interactions. Most of the, this work was uh, sponsored uh, by Health Protection Branch Government of uh, Alberta, Ministry of Health, and uh, uh, these are some of our major collaborators mentioned the leadership of the Alberta Center for Toxicology, ASEA, the University of uh, Ottawa. Thank you very much, uh, and if you have time, I would be happy to answer any questions you may have.